Hello everybody, Ranger John Heron here at Huntsville State Park, and today I want to talk to you about this prehistoric creature right here, dating all the way back from the Cretaceous period. Yes, while dinosaurs still roamed the earth, this creature right here roamed right, right beside him. And while it may not evolved much physically from its ancient ancestors, this creature has now become a tool-wielding ecological engineer. I want to tell you about those and other interesting facts you might not know about Huntsville State Park's own American alligator. Now, with the American alligators starting at the very beginning with their life cycle, uh, their mother will, around June, July, will build a nest, normally out of mud, debris, leaves, branches that she finds, builds it close to the water, and will put about 20 to 50 eggs in there. Now here's something to know that as that debris breaks down, it generates heat, kind of like a composting pile. Now this heat will keep the eggs warm, but it also dictates the gender of the eggs. So if the temperature of the nest is above 96 degrees, you will generally get mostly male alligators. However, if the temperature of the nest falls below, I think, 84 degrees, you're going to get mostly females. And between that, you'll get a mix of genders. So the temperature of the nest is what dictates the gender of the alligators that are hatched. When they're ready to be hatched, they'll let off a little chirping noise from inside the egg. That's a way of communicating to each other that, hey everybody, it's time to get up, it's time to get out of these shells and get moving. It also lets mom know that they're ready to get out. So she will then dig up the eggs and very carefully transport them using her mouth to the water's edge, which isn't too far from her nest. There the young will form a little pod and be watched by their very overprotective mother for about the first year of their lives. They can also make a little cute little chirping noise at a young age too, but that generally means that they need help from mama. And she is very defensive of her babies, so especially if you see any young alligator out here, you want to give them lots of space. Now alligators are known as apex predators, which means they're top at the food chain. Now while they're really young, they may have predators that eat them, such as birds, uh, even uh, raccoons have been known to do it, and even bigger gators. But once they reach maturity, there are very few animals out there that are willing to prey on the larger alligators. Now you can't do a program about alligators without talking about those pearly whites. <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about the alligator's toothy grin right here. Now when an alligator is first born, their nose tends to be a little on the narrow side, but as they get older, their nose starts to widen and becomes much more broader. And that's one of the key differences between your alligator and your crocodile, is the alligator has a much more broader, especially right there at the snout, which puts their upper teeth over the lower teeth and those lower teeth fit up into nice little pockets on the inside of the jaw there. Now as their mouth adapts so do their teeth and their teeth they have anywhere from 74 to 80 teeth in their mouth at a time. Now I say at a time because they do fall out but much like another apex predator the shark they grow back. Now an alligator can easily go through 2,000 teeth in its lifetime to the math there, if a tooth fairy left a, pill, left a quarter under their pillow each time they lost a tooth, they can make $500 a year just on lost teeth. Another interesting fact about their jaw, they have one of the top uh, jaw strengths for bite in the animal kingdom. However, their muscles that allow them to open the jaw are fairly weak. So when you see uh, professionals handle alligators and they're just grabbing with their bare hands on the jaw like this or they're wrapping tape around that's actually something that they can do because as i said their bite is incredibly strong but their ability to open their jaws is very weak another cool little trick when you see an alligator out there in the water most of the time all you can see is their head floating above the surface not even their whole head just mostly their eyes and their nose well, did you know you can estimate the size of the gator just by seeing the top of their head? If you take a look, and what you'll see is you'll see their eyes and their nose. If you can estimate how long that is, like this one here, we're looking at about 12, almost 13 inches between the eyes 
and the nose of this skull right here. And if we look at the information, this one came to us from Lake Livingston and it was 12 feet, six inches. So however many inches you can estimate it's long, that's how many feet the alligator is from nose to tail. Now alligators are ambush predators, which means they will lay very still until prey approaches. And as far as what they eat, well, they're a bit of opportunistic feeders, so it's what's ever available. Now out here at Huntsville State Park, they do enjoy probably a healthy diet of fish. Of course, they can eat other uh, reptiles, even smaller gators, uh, mammals, birds. I mean, a water source like Lake Raven here is very popular for a lot of wildlife to come to and drink, and any animal that approaches the water is considered prey. Now, they could go after larger things like deer or hog if it's a bigger alligator, but they generally try to stay to something smaller that they can swallow, eat easily and swallow. And of course, because of our size, humans are generally not on the menu for alligators. Uh, they do enjoy hanging out at our fishing piers here because, again, they're opportunistic feeders. So, yes, there are some people who should not be feeding them, but do from the piers. They also know that if fishermen, if you're not quick enough to reel in that fish, Ooh, and that's easy catching for a gator. So this is definitely a spot to come see them, but please, if you see them on one side of the pier, just head to the other and fish from there and leave them alone. Of course, the interesting fact as far as their diet goes, they have actually been documented uh, on video as well as stomach contents have been eating fruit. So even showing you that an apex predator carnivore knows that even a healthy dose of fresh fruit is good to have in your diet. So another cool thing about gators is that their level of intelligence. Now some level, some scientists uh, gauge the intelligence of an animal by if they can use tools. And believe it or not, alligators have learned to use tools. I'm not talking hammers and saws and power equipment, but they have learned to use certain things in their environment to lure other species. For example, uh, a lot of the birds that exist around the lakes, they like being there near the gators because gators take care of other predators. However, the Gators have learned they can lure these birds. They'll take sticks, especially sticks that these birds may be looking to add to a nest, and they will carefully balance the sticks on their head and wait. They make great camouflage, but they're hoping one of those birds will come by and grab it. Let's actually see if it works. Well, no birds coming by to collect. Maybe it's a stick. I wonder if I have a bigger stick. If I balance a bigger stick, will I get a bigger bird? Let's try that. Here, birdie, 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 birdie. Here, birdie, 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 birdie. So in what way does a gator become an ecological engineer? Well, that's easy. They wallow in depression. I'm sorry, I read that long. They hollow out depressions. What a gator will do in a wetland area is start moving some dirt aside to create a little pool for them to be in and they'll create a couple of these around the wetland area. Now, during dry season, when water tends to evaporate, it will gather within these gator pools. And that way it gives a habitat to the wetland wildlife that depends on the water. It gives a food source to gators and other animals as well. Also, that dirt that gets pushed up gives a place for plants and insects to create little burrows as well. So it protects a wetland habitat during the dry season. So I hope you learned something new. I know I've learned a couple of really cool things on gators during this talk. Look forward to you coming out to Huntsville State Park and checking out the American alligator. Just remember, give them space and life is better outside. Y'all take care.